the title of my presentation is uh, Deep Learning Methods for Instrument Separation and Recognition. And as uh, uh, Simon mentioned, I'm Carlos, and I'm currently at uh, Durham Muir and Queen Mary. Uh, so before uh, starting, just giving an overall table of contents of the presentation, I'll talk about uh, an overview of the project and, and talk about uh, involved institutions and uh, my supervisors. Uh, and then I'll talk about the main project contributions, which are in two uh, main topics of source separation and instrument recognition. Uh, so let's start. Uh, yeah, so the MIP Frontiers project acronym for my uh, PhD uh, is the KMUL2 which had the original title of Improving Transcription Through Instrument Separation and Recognition. Uh, and now the title is a little bit different, but it's the same project. Uh, yeah, I've been working it for three years uh, and I'm hosted by Doramir. So even though I'm a PhD at Queen Mary, I mostly live here uh, at uh, Sweden. And I did my second month at Queen Mary. Uh, uh, and my supervisors are Emmanuel uh, Benetos from Queen Mary, and Simon, and also Sven. They're all here at the talk. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so I'm just starting with the summary of the contributions of uh, my work uh, so far. And uh, as I mentioned before, the contributions are separated into two main different uh, topics and source separation and instrument recognition. I have currently uh, two uh, publications in uh, source separation. One in 2019, uh, we published a new harmonic percussive source separation uh, method. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, later. Uh, and I also developed a domain adaptation method for source separation uh, published on signal processing letters. Uh, and uh, this year, uh, we're going to present at ISMIR uh, a paper on uh, instrument recognition. And we also developed a data set that can be used for source separation that we, we entitled Tap and Fido data set, and it's available uh, for free on Zenodo. Uh, and also, some of my algorithms already been implemented into uh, uh, commercial product. Uh, it's going to be available soon uh, in the Scorecloud Songwriter, a new uh, software from Toremir. Uh, so uh, it's another good contribution uh, as a collaboration between academia and uh, industry partners at the MIP Frontiers project. So first, I'm going to start talking about, a little bit about the contributions regarding source operation uh, that are related to my project. Uh, basically, uh, I'm investigating harmonic percussive source separation, and uh, as you can, as you know, uh, most uh, all different instruments they have percussive uh, sounds and harmonic sounds combined to form like sounds of uh, uh, each instrument. Uh, so when you say harmonic percussive source separation, what I what I mean when I uh, define the HPSS inside the project is that I want to uh, separate instruments that are mainly uh, harmonics from instruments that are mainly uh, percussives. So I don't want to extract the percussive uh, uh, attacks or percussive uh, patterns from the harmonical uh, sounds, uh, harmonic instrument sounds. So if you have a guitar sound, uh, it's considered uh, harmonic sound, even though it has percussive uh, uh, attack uh, at the start. Uh, so the idea here is to perform separation um, on uh, mixtures of uh, drums and uh, harmonic instruments and try to remove, uh, uh, separate them both together. And you can also see, see it as a drum extraction task where you want to have a, a track with the drum and a track with uh, the other more harmonic instruments. Uh, so yeah, so first we developed uh, this uh, HPSS algorithm that I wanted to apply domain knowledge to the task of uh, harmonic percussive source operation. Uh, as you can see here on those two illustrations, one is uh, an harmonic instrument 
uh, how the spectrogram looks like and a percussive instrument, how the spectrogram looks like. And you can see that uh, percussive instruments, they, they have, uh, they form vertical lines usually while the harmonic sounds, they form uh, horizontal lines. And uh, when we use uh, CNNs, usually uh, people always use uh, uh, squared filters. So I was thinking, oh, if we use uh, horizontal filters and vertical filters, can we create more efficient uh, deep learning model that can learn those timber-related feature maps of both harmonic and percussive sounds more, more, uh, more efficiently? And then we developed this algorithm that we published at uh, WASPA that has uh, three different branches. One uses 13 by one filters, uh, the CNN, and another used a three by three normal squared filters, and also another branch that uses one by 13. And they all combine together to form, like, uh, to perform the separation here. Uh, and uh, I also uh, decided to use MDense Nets, which is uh, uh, a network that has a lot of skip connections. So you can uh, decrease even more the number of, uh, of uh, trainable parameters. Uh, and uh, on this project, we used the MuseDB18 to train our model. And I used the drum track to, for the percussive source as a ground truth for the percussive source. And, uh, the, the, the sum of the other tracks that are available on MuseDB uh, as an harmonic source. Yeah, so here is just an overview of the results. This is our proposed method. And I compared with the same method without using the three different branches. Uh, you can see that it's better when you include those different branches. Uh, when the three W here means three way. Uh, so it's a different branches. And here is without using the 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 MDense net use just a normal unit with different uh, filters and you can see that an average just by including the the kernel shapes that are different uh, you can see that it's increased results uh, and here are the link that you can hear some examples we don't have much time to hear here so if you're interested in checking the some audio examples that are available here on this link uh, so another contributions that uh, I developed that are part of this project is a domain adaptation for harmonic percussive source operation. So here I just, uh, as an illustration, I grabbed this table from uh, the paper uh, th that introduced Slack, which is a synthesized, a really big synthesized data set uh, that you have, can you be used for source operation. And here they, they say how the model performance is dependent on uh, the type of data that you use, uh, which in, uh, in, the, in the literature, you can find this as a data set bias. So basically, I just want to illustrate here that uh, this is when you evaluate their proposal on MuseDB, and here is when you evaluate the proposal on Slack. And you can see that uh, here, when you use MuseDB as the training set, and you evaluate the MuseDB, you got those results. But if you use Slack to, to train your model and you evaluate the MuseDB, you can see that the results are much worse because the data is different. But if you combine them together, you can see that you can even get uh, better results. So, uh, and here's the other way around. And you have, uh, when you're evaluating on Slack and you have a model that's been trained on MuseDB, it's, it gets really bad results. But if you have, uh, data set that's been training data that looks like select data, uh, it has uh, better results. So if you can combine your data set, uh, it, it can, it also, of course, can help. But what if you don't have uh, label data from the particular domain that you want to uh, separate from? So that's uh, how can we, uh, how I, a task that I wanted to address here on this, uh, on this, uh, publication that we ended up doing at uh, IEEE SPL. Uh, so here as a case study, I just wanna show like an example of how the music from MuseDB looks like. Uh, I just wanna play it. Uh. 
Yeah, it's okay. So it's normal uh, pop, uh, uh, regular uh, Western music style uh, with vocals, drums, a lot of different instrument variability. And we had a, a lot of uh, Swedish video music. Uh, didn't have uh, the ground truth tracks for for the instruments. Uh, and Swedish video tune uh, video music usually has a lot of foot tapping. So it's basically fiddle, fiddle, uh, violin mixed with a foot tapping. And this is just an example of one of the songs that we uh, want to separate. Yeah, so just uh, one example, but we had a, a lot of examples. Uh, and then we, I was thinking, oh, can you create a model that's been trained on music B and uh, evaluate on uh, Swedish video music, will it perform good or not? And then we developed the tap and video data set uh, in order to, uh, to be able to evaluate a model on a different domain. And the tap and video data set, it has uh, currently 28 stereo recordings of Scandinavian video tunes that has different. Uh, and styles uh, of uh, Swedish fiddle music. Uh, and it contains the foot tapping track and also the fiddle track. Uh, and it's available on Snodo. Uh, and uh, you can use it for source operation and analysis of fiddle music, uh, and also studies of metrical expression. Uh, and uh, I'm going to use this data set to evaluate the model and also um, to perform the domain adaptation. So basically, here is the difference between the two domains that, that I used. Uh, one is uh, MuseDB, and the other is the Tap and Fiddle, which mainly uh, the main different. Uh, and uh, here is how I propose to develop to 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 address this problem. Uh, I'm not gonna extend too much here. Uh, if you're interested, you can see on the paper. But basically, uh, we have an encoder and a decoder and a latent representation. And uh, we have uh, our predicted harmonic mask and predicted percussive masks. And if it has a B, it comes from the tap and fiddle, and A it comes from uh, come from uh, MuseDB. So basically, here uh, our separator encodes to a latent representation and outputs a mask. And I have the ground truth for those, and I can compute a loss here. Uh, but for the domain B, I don't have the ground truth, so I cannot use it. Uh, however, I include this domain discriminator here that uh, tries to uh, classify if this encoded feature comes from a data set of a domain A or comes from the data set from domain B. So it comes from A, it should be 0, and from B, it should be 1. And then we train this adversarially, and the encoder at the end will try to uh, fold the discriminator into creating in, uh, latent representations that looks have the same probability have the same distribution even though it comes from either domain A or domain B, and then we can create a better uh, separation here of uh, data from domain B. Yeah, here is just an overview of the results. Uh, uh, you can see uh, UDA is is our proposed method. Uh, uh, because I'm supervised domain adaptation. Uh, and you can see that it obtains similar performance when you join uh, the SDA joint is when you combine both data sets. So it has similar performance when you combine uh, labeled data from Tap and Fido with, uh, with unlabeled data from Tap and Fido. So just the mixtures. Uh, uh, and a UDA large is just a model that uses lot, lots more a lot more data than is available on Tap and Fido. Uh, so we used uh, much more un unlabeled data to perform the separation. And uh, here is the model that's been trained only in USB and only on, oops, and only on uh, Tap and Fido. Uh, and here is a comparison. You can see that uh, when it, the UDA, it's, it's much better than using all MuseDB. So it can increase, have a big boost when you evaluate on Tap and Fido. You have a really big boost in performance only by using unlabeled data. Uh, so, yeah, so also it has some examples here on this link. 
if you're uh, interested in the work, you can check it. Uh, uh, yeah, so now I'm going to talk about instrument recognition, uh, just a little uh, bit uh, of my recent uh, proposal for instrument recommendation. Yeah, so basically, we have a two stage process of uh, performing uh, automatic music instrument music transcription. Uh, and first, we usually first uh, do the MPE, which is the motor pitch estimation, where you first estimate the pitches of the different sources at each time frame. Um, and after you do this, you can typically form segments to combine uh, the, of a similar pitch, and then you can create individual notes. This is what we call a motor pitch estimation and note tracking. And then after you have the different pitches, you can try to assign the pitches to different instruments. So that's what I'm trying to address here is uh, after I have the different notes and the estimated pitch, uh, can I assign it to a different instrument? Can I recognize the instrument that played that particular note? So basically uh, here is uh, an overview of the method I developed. Uh, so basically, uh, Given a set of predicted notes, uh, the objectives assign each note to an instrument class, uh, as I mentioned before. So I consider each note as having a constant pitch, F0, an, an onset time, and an offset time. Uh, so basically, after I have a single, a, a, a single note that has uh, these three different properties, and the, and the music spectrogram, can I give this to a deep neural network? to classify that particular node. So this is what I want to address here on this uh, paper. So if I have multiple nodes, I will have uh, different onsets, different offsets, different F0s. So I can uh, change uh, the second valid, the second uh, input here to, to, to give me another class if it comes from another instrument. Yeah, and uh, in order to do this, I use the music net which is a data set that has uh, 11 different instruments. Uh, and uh, it has no drums and no vocals. And it has all the annotations of every instrument and when it was played and not played. Uh, so it has the F zeros, the onsets and offsets. So I use those uh, ground truth to create and uh, train and evaluate my proposal. So here, basically, what I, what I propose to do is just to once I have a node that I want to analyze and classify the instrument, I just create a spectrogram around that particular node by cutting the mixture in a, on the onset and an onset and a, a, a plus a T max, which you call here is a maximum duration of node. So and also if, if, the, if the offset time is uh, ends before it, I just fade with zeros. If not, I just ignore and I will just analyze uh, this window of Tmax of duration. And on the other input, I just grab that particular node that comes from the onset to the offset time. And I create a harmonic comb representation based on the F0 value that I know that I want to analyze. So here I just show in uh, two harmonics, but you can use more harmonics. Uh, and the rest is just zero. Uh, and here I just grabbed a uh, saved interval of 30 milliseconds because you can have uh, uh, small uh, problems and errors with the onset time. So this uh, delta value is just taking into account those small variations of your onset time. Uh, so that's a really simple in to a two input model. If you have different nodes that happen at the same time, we will just change those harmonics here. And the model would you classify a different class. Uh, yeah, so basically here is how a real world input looks like. Uh, you have here here I had I think three nodes happening at the same time, but I just want to analyze this particular node that I uh, I know that this pitch is happening at this particular uh, time. So yeah, here is just the results. I'm just gonna go through really quickly. So I, I tested different uh, harmonics for the second input here. Yeah, I tested with the CQT and also with the male STFT. 
and here are the F zeros. You can see that when you increase the number of harmonics, usually you have better F score. This are, those are F scores, and it's really uh, good results. Uh, and here, what's important is this one that when you ignore the second input, you just have the mixture without any second input. You can see that results are uh, not good because, of course, you need that particular second input to make your model classify the note correctly. Otherwise, it would just say that it's a piano because the data set has a lot of piano notes. Uh, so it get even though it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so that's it for this, uh, this instrument. I have some examples, uh, one example actually, that I want to show you. This is a clip from MusicNet that has three instruments, violin, viola, and cello. And this is how the ground truth notes uh, looks like. Uh, actually, I can show this. This is the ground truth. So the, the red is the violin and the, uh, the viola. And here is the, the, the cello. Just play a little bit, not gonna. And then after I give this to my model and analyze each note separately, this is uh, the classification uh, uh, of each note. You can see that has a couple of mistakes. This note was from a viola and said it was uh, cello. Uh, also a couple of mistakes, but not too much, mis too many mistakes. Uh, one that's in particular interest is this one that's orange. It means that it was this exact same note that was played by the viola and the violin. That's why it's orange. And it completely confused the model to classify it as a pink, which is a piano. So uh, if you have the exact same note uh, that's been played by two instruments, it can confuse this, uh, this model to classify into a third different instrument. So that's one of the main limitations. Uh, and here is just a test uh, I, I did using uh, uh, third party MP. Uh, so those three here uh, at the top, you can see the ground truth pitches. And here is uh, the prediction using uh, a Toremir uh, MP that we have at Toremir. You can see that's had some mistakes, but it's similar. And here is when you stream Toremir uh, MP. Uh, and here is when you stream uh, the bit, the ground truth pitches, and these are just the ground truth. Uh, you can see that's a really, uh, obtained really impressive results. And also here is another example, uh, just going through here really quickly. Yeah, so you can see that it has uh, promising results and it's also modular approach that you can combine with different MP. You don't have to use the exact ground truth labels. And uh, on the paper, I also tested a different MP that's available uh, on the literature. Uh, and uh, there's this limitation of predicting just one instrument per node. Yeah, so now I'm just talking about the future uh, works that I'm planning to do. Um, and also some final remarks. Uh, you can see that the project was uh, uh, really focused on the collaboration between academia and industry. Uh, one of my algorithms already been incorporated into software. We're working on incorporating this other one uh, to uh, uh, industry scale system. And uh, I'm also uh, working on extension of this instrument recognition where I will like this node level classifier with a frame level classifier. Uh, and I'm also, uh, uh, still working on doing uh, new experiments using a larger data set and other instrument types that are not available on uh, MusicNet data set. Yeah, so here are the, the main publications that I mentioned, uh, you can see here, uh, and also other references. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, my talk. Thank you. If you have any questions, 